Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this session on Powerful BI, Experiences in the Real-World Use of Microsoft BI Tools on-Premise. My name's Ian Woodgate, and I'll be co-presenting today with Tim Bridgen, who is one of my customers. <clears throat> A couple of announcements before we get started. First of all, it is actually corporate policy that the name of Tim's company is not used, so we won't be referring to them by name today. Secondly, I want to let everyone know that this is going to be a fairly high level, how we did it, and our experiences story. And I won't be going into a great deal of technical detail. However, I'll be more than happy to try to answer any questions of a more technical nature that you may have, either before the session, either after the session, or do come and ask me at any time throughout the conference. I have one notice to, to read out uh, before we get started properly, and that is we have to just say that the views we're expressing today are personal and do not reflect the views, policies or opinions of our employers. Right, with the formalities out of the way, let's introduce ourselves more fully. My name, as I said, is Ian Woodgate. I'm the Managing Director of Point Beyond. We're an IT solutions business focused on the Microsoft stack. Uh, my background is IT within financial services, although these days I work across a broad range of industries. I also run the SharePoint UK user group for the south coast of England, and I'll now let Tim say a few words to introduce himself. Good morning. <coughs> uh, a couple of apologies to start with, I'm afraid. Uh, I'm feeling rather shaken this morning, because when I came out of the uh, Westminster Tube, I looked up and saw the Houses of Parliament in front of me, and suddenly Big Ben struck. And it made me feel like I'd been summoned before a select committee of the House this morning. So, no hard questions, please. Uh, and the second is to repeat the apology for not being able to uh, uh, name my employer. It's, uh, it's very secret, Squirrel. I am sorry. It's global policy that because we are a global premium cosmetics and fragrance house, our brand names are everything to us, uh, and we won't let them be, um, uh, be uh, used in any way other than by us. Um, I, uh, uh, I'm very happy to be here in a personal capacity, uh, and in fact I had to promise our HR department that I'd lead, leave my tie at home to, to prove that this was personal. So, uh, My name is, is Tim Bridgen. <coughs> I am uh, Director of Data and BI and Operational Reporting for the Cosmetics House with uh, no name. My background <coughs> is as a, uh, I'm an accountant by trade, hence the, uh, hence the suit, so I'm a civilian, not an IT uh, professional. Uh, my background, my career has been in financial control. Uh, a couple of years ago, uh, I took a career break to sail around the world. Um, I got as far as Australia with my wife and uh, ran out of money, so very poor financial control. but. God, it was worth it. Um, I was very lucky that my employer with no name took me back, but this time in my current role, responsible for BI. Thank you very much, Tim. So, just to introduce the agenda for today, we're going to, Tim is going <coughs> to talk a little bit briefly about the business and just set the scene. I'm then going to take a look at the background and the timeline to the project that we've been working with Tim's company to deliver. Um, then going to dive a little bit into the technology and do a quick demo of some of the tools that we've used. We're then going to step through the approach that we actually took to deliver the solution. Tim's going to review some of the reports, and I will use the term reports to refer to the things, the visualisations that we're actually creating. Uh, and then we're going to share with you the kind of lessons learned, the tips <coughs> and tricks um, that we came across whilst doing this project, uh, and have a quick look at what, what might be next and plans for the future. So, over to you again, Tim, if you just want to say a few words about, uh, about the business, that would be very useful. Uh, yep, I, uh, my <coughs> I'm employed by the UK and Ireland sales and marketing uh, subsidiary of the Global Corporation. It is, though, a truly global corporation. We operate in 125 countries. Um, we have uh, more than 25 brands. Uh, we a significant proportion of our global business is within EMEA uh, and within that uh, the UK is uh, particularly significant. Our core business is uh, within several thousand actually department store counters 
uh, but we have a, a very important online presence uh, and a significant estate of freestanding stores as well. Thank you very much, Tim. So, so the conclusion really from that is that this is a significant global business with, with a lot of data. Um, and in particular, the challenge that Tim came to us with was we've got 50 million rows of sales data for the UK and Ireland that we need to analyse. Um, how are we going to go about doing that? What I want to talk about now is a little bit about the background to the solution and why we chose the tooling that we chose. So several things kind of came together in almost the perfect storm, I guess, to use a sailing analogy. Um, we've got sales data coming in from multiple feeds. We've got data from the counters, from shops, from online. Uh, that data is being stored and processed in a DB2 database. Over the last year or so, there have been some a whole set of new business requirements really identified the need for new reports uh, within the organisation. And lastly, this company already had SharePoint 2013 on-premise, being used predominantly for forms and workflow type applications. So we took all those things together and we thought, hey, this is a great opportunity to evaluate the Microsoft BI tooling and see whether or not we can actually use it as a potential quick win. You know, low cost of entry, let's, let's see what we can do with it. Or to put it at a more basic level, um, can Excel and SharePoint handle 50 million rows of sales data? And some people thought we were a bit crazy trying to do that. Uh, yeah, we, have, um, we obviously have enterprise global solutions for, uh, for sales reporting generally. But what we were looking at here was a, a UK specific tactical at the time uh, reporting requirement. Uh, but that could handle this, this, uh, this data volume of uh, 50 million rows. Our IT department, who were used to mainframes, to be honest, they sucked their teeth and said, oh, it's a huge amount of data, uh, <laughs> because actually the, the mainframe that uh, probably needs an upgrade didn't... Uh, it was actually... It was a big amount of uh, data for it. Uh, so they were very sceptical, very sceptical. Indeed. But anyway, as you shall see from this session, um, the conclusion really is that you certainly can... Um, handle and pivot, indeed pivot 50 million or more rows of data in Excel as we've successfully proved. Absolutely. What I want to do now is, is just share with you the timeline of the project because this was to set to some pretty aggressive deadlines and timescales. We started talking with Tim and his team um, at the end of October 2014 right? and then on the 5th of January, so just a couple of months later including the Christmas breaks, we did a uh, Christmas and New Year break we did an initial preview release to the business. And on the 2nd of February 2015, we did full rollout. So, so very tight timescales. Absolutely. The, the background to this was that our, our general manager suddenly lost patience with being given uh, uh, divergent sales data from different systems that didn't agree, didn't add up. So his, his first concern was to get, he wants one sales report uh, that everybody would use that uh, would agree with any subsets that were provided. Um, once, and that was, the, that was the initial brief, as soon as we showed him what we were doing and the sort of uh, solution that was going to be possible, he then immediately said, look, I, I need this to be expanded beyond head office. I want this to be put in the hands of the field as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. So a couple of key takeaways from, from this timeline. First of all, this shows that if you use this tooling and use it sensibly, <coughs> this can be quick. You can be getting solutions out to your business users in a matter of weeks. And the other thing, the kind of lesson learned from our point of view, is that if you're given a tight timeline, then you may have to make some compromises when you're faced with challenges, as we did when we found some issues, as I'll talk about later, with slices and data refresh. What I want to do now is touch on what the experience was for the people creating the reports and for the people consuming them. And it's important to point out here that the reports are created by Tim's team of analysts without input either from IT or from ourselves at Point Beyond. What they're doing is they're using Excel, Excel 2013, to create the reports that they want. Uh, they're publishing them, in, publishing them up to SharePoint, SharePoint on-premise in this case, and then users are coming in and they're viewing them those reports on their PCs in browsers or on iPads using browsers. It and the need to support iPads was, was a pretty critical requirement. Yeah, I was going to say that this, the, uh, the fact that these reports could be made 
uh, available to our field teams out and about on their, their iPads was uh, actually an unexpected bonus for our general manager. And uh, as soon as he saw that that was possible, he bought into it. Thanks, Tim. So I'm going to talk about a little bit about the main tooling that we used and then do a quick demo to, to show how it works. So the first thing we have to do is we have to load our data into Excel. And the tool that we wanted to use for that is a tool called Power Query, which is a fairly new technology within Excel that could connect to a wide variety of data sources. So Power Query gives you the ability to, to load, to transform and to merge your data in, in very powerful ways. Um, however, we had a problem with it. And the problem is actually with SharePoint on-premise, um, it's not possible to refresh data that has been loaded with Power Query. It only works with SharePoint Online, okay? So we had to use uh, old school uh, Excel data connections to get our data into Excel, which as it turned out for us was not, not a problem. The next thing, right, is now when you load your data into Excel, it's important to realize that I'm not talking about taking that data and loading it into a worksheet. Because 50 million rows of data in an Excel worksheet probably isn't going to work that very well, right? What you're actually doing is you're loading that data into a highly performant in-memory database called Power Pivot. And this database allows you to create relationships within your data, to do calculated fields, to create KPIs, and it handles and scales to hundreds of millions of rows, really without a problem. Okay, so now we've loaded our data, we've got it modeled in Power Pivot, we need to visualize it. And we can use old school kind of pivot tables. I'm guessing everyone here is fairly familiar with pivot tables. Those work fine. We would have liked to use Power View as well. And Power View is a, new, is a kind of a newer and more graphical visualization tool. Um, but again, we've got a problem. Guess what? It's with our iPads. Uh, with SharePoint on premise, Power View dashboards can't be viewed on iPads, OK? That will only work if you're using SharePoint Online, which we're not. So for now, at least, we're stuck. Um, using pivot tables. Can I, can I just say, we keep stressing that it's, uh, we have a, an on-premise solution. Um, it's because uh, uh, we have another global policy at the moment that we don't use the, the cloud. Obviously, we're examining it, trying to get signed off on it. But for the time being, uh, we're restricted by policy to be only using on-premise. <coughs> OK, thanks, Tim. OK, so now we've created our reports. The next stage for, for the uh, users is they publish them to SharePoint. And that's really quite a simple process. It's a matter of simply uploading or saving the, the, the created Excel spreadsheets to either document libraries within SharePoint or Power Pivot galleries, which you can think of just as a special type of document library uh, for handling these, um, these Excel spreadsheets. A couple of things to say about this. You do need SharePoint Enterprise Edition for this to work. And you also need SQL Server either in the BI or Enterprise Edition as well. You also need an instance of SQL Server Analysis Services running in Power Pivot mode. And as we found, um, you have to do a fair amount of capacity planning, patching, and configuration work to get everything working correctly. It's and not a trivial exercise <coughs> to get this set up. Having said that, we, uh, we have a global instance of, of SQL Server. We already had it. Uh, and we were already using uh, SharePoint 13, so yeah. we had a farm. Yeah, no, uh, we were de definitely not starting from scratch, no. which was a huge benefit. No. What I would like to do now is do a quick demo just to show how these tools work, in particular how we import data using Power Query, how we can mod model it in Power Pivot, and view it using Pivot Tables and Power View. Now, because we can't use corporate data, obviously that's fairly sensitive, uh, I'm going to show that using fictional data from the, the famous Northwind database from Microsoft. So let me just flick over to that. Okay. So what you can see I've got here is I've got a, uh, an Excel spreadsheet. And uh, I've actually preloaded some data into Power Pivot behind the scenes here. The way I do that, <laughs> is I can use Power Query, so I can come here. Power Query is a very nice solution. If I click on this Power Query tab, you can see it actually is possible to load data from a very wide range of different data sources. Okay, so a very powerful and capable data import mechanism. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to take data from SQL Server. My database is just my local laptop for now.
brings up this little navigation pane. I can go and select the tables that I want to load. And for me, this is the, I am going to load our product information. So I should select the product table. And notice down here this load button. I'm going to select this and say load to, because I don't want to load the data into my worksheet. I want to load it into my Power Pivot database. So I make sure that that's set up correctly here. I want to create the connection. I don't want to put it in a table in the worksheet, and I want to add it to the data model. So we click OK. And this load is pretty quick, actually. Um, it's about 500 rows. You'll see that come through. There we go. That's done. So now we've loaded the data. Now what we can do is we can model it using Power Pivot. And the way we do that is we go into um, Power Pivot here, and we can click on this Manage button. And if anyone's used Access, this will kind of look strangely familiar. Um, I've got my tables here, but I've also got a diagram view. So I'm still within Excel here, but this is just Power Pivot within Excel. You can see here the new uh, product table that I've loaded up here. And I just need to create one relationship, which I know is from this sales order detail here. I've got product ID, and I'm just going to drag and drop to link that to my product ID. And you can see also some other tables that I previously loaded. So that will create the relationship, and that's done. <coughs> I'm then free to go and start creating my pivot tables, which is a pretty easy exercise. I can come in, sorry, go back to there, come back to the menu, and just say, insert pivot table. Where do you want to put it? Let's put it on the existing worksheet. Standard stuff here. Choose my, um, I don't know, let's say territory name. And say the, the line items for my sales, so I can see my sales by territory. Line total. There we go. So a very simple example. What I've actually done is pre-prepared one earlier, so you can see something a bit more complete. If I just bring this up here. Um, what I've got here is some more complex power, uh, some more complex pivot tables. I've put um, little spark lines on this one here. So we're showing sales by territory here. We're showing product sales over years. I create another tab here that's showing sales by salesperson and region. And I've also just to show people created a, a power view sheet, which looks a bit like that. If you've not seen that before, nice interactive charting. You've got a little slicer here. We can choose our year. Everything interacts. You can filter down on the territories so forth and so on. Showing that for completeness, although, we, as I say, we didn't make use of that technology in the demo, um, in the solution that we created for, for Tim's company. And then when we've done all that, we upload it to SharePoint. And I'm going to show that here. I've got an, an instance of SharePoint here. I've uploaded my file here. I can just click on it to open it. So this is what, what Tim's users are doing, either using browsers on PCs or browsers on iPads. And they can see the pivots and interact with them. And Tim's going to show um, some, of the, uh, some of the reports that were actually created for real later on in the session. And you see here, this is interactive as well, even in the browser. You can do drill downs and this kind of thing. And that works on the iPads as well. OK, let's jump back to the slides. And we shall continue. OK. So what I want to do now is talk about the project approach and the experiences as we went through the project. And we took a kind of three-stage approach. First of all, we imported data using, believe it or not, CSV files. Then we started taking data <coughs> from SQL Server. And we're currently working on an enhanced version where we're building cubes using SQL Server analysis services. Initially, we didn't have uh, the SQL Server instance available to us or knowledge of how to use it. Uh, and our mainframe was only able to export the data that we needed to, to manipulate in CSV format. So that's why we started that way. Yeah, I think that's, that's very valid, Tim. And I think you know, the CSV also served its purpose for us in terms of being a very quick kind of proof of principle. Is this thing going to fly or not? We've got the CSV files from the mainframe. We can answer some pretty fundamental questions pretty quickly. Can we handle 50 million rows of data in Excel? Can we, pit, can we create the reports that we need using Excel and pivot tables? Is the performance going to be OK? Is this thing going to fly? Are the numbers actually right? Okay. So it's all very well creating some nice looking reports 
but other numbers actually correct? And I never remember working with Tim's team, it was a pretty high priority to go off and actually validate that the figures coming back were right. And you know, something that sometimes people do tend to overlook, but it's always worth checking. These reports were going to initially go straight onto our general manager's desk, or at least available on his iPad, so they, they absolutely had to be Abs right. Yeah, can you imagine if those had been wrong? Could have been pretty terminal for the project. Can we publish these reports up to SharePoint? And also this had the advantage of being very easy. It kept any, any, in, it kept any interaction off our line of business DB2 database. Um, we didn't want to upset IT by hooking up Excel and pulling 50 million rows off their production system straight away. So very simple, nice check. Um, how did we get on with it? Um, it worked. We found the data load was quite slow. It took about um, 15 minutes to, to load 50 million rows of CSV. Which the, the mainframe uh, reporting system <coughs> takes, <coughs> takes an hour to do the same thing, actually. It really is startling. So, so Tim thought that was OK. I thought, oh, that's quite <laughs> slow. So it's interesting, the different kind of uh, approaches that people have. Um, no data refresh capability, of course, beyond reload everything. Um, Moving large files around, unsurprisingly, we found that to be pretty cumbersome. And CSV files with 50 million rows of data are, are several gigabytes in size, so that it, was, it was painful working with them. Um, we found that we did need Excel 2013 64-bit edition to create the reports. Um, only the 64-bit edition can address enough memory for that power pivot database to hold all of the data in memory. Uh, we found that the size of the database was, uh, the raw database was about 8 gigs, uh, and that once it had loaded into memory through Excel, it came down, came down to about 2. two yeah. But the um, 8 gigs worth had to be addressed as part of the load. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we found that we could take that, that Excel file, we could publish it to SharePoint, and, and it worked. We hadn't configured slices yet, but it worked. Um, we found we tried, although we were using Excel data connections, we thought it'd be interesting to try Power Query as well. Um, and Power Query actually failed after two gigs, um, whereas Excel data connections was okay, which is kind of interesting. Something to bear in mind if ever you do need to load a lot of CSV data. And lastly, and critically, we found that the pivot tables worked well on the iPads, they were fine, they were viewable, um, but PowerView, as we already knew, didn't work on iPads for on-premise. So that was, that was the CSV, that was, you know, the thumbs up from that. We were quite happy with progress on that. The next thing that we moved to was perhaps a more kind of strategic enterprise solution using a SQL Server database. So what we actually did in this scenario is the data was taken from the DB2 database and loaded into SQL Server 2012 using a, a, a third-party tool called Informatica. And Informatica was a, a, a tool that Tim's uh, team were familiar with using, happy to use, but it really works in a similar way to SQL Server integration services. It's yeah, we have a, an enterprise version. Of, uh, globally, we use Informatica for uh, <coughs> uh, data management. Uh, locally, we used uh, Power Center Express. There's a, there's a free version of it, actually. Uh, and the single-user paid version is only $8,000, and that's, that's the one we're using. Yeah, it certainly seems a very capable tool. Other things we did, we set up the infrastructure components to support PowerPivot properly in SharePoint. So we had set stand up an instance of SQL Server Analysis Services that runs in PowerPivot mode, and we also had to create a PowerPivot SharePoint service application, and we had to do a lot of configuration work. Um, we used Excel data connections, as I've already said, uh, to import data from SQL Server. And Tim's team did a lot of good work on creating nice looking reports uh, and the presentation of those reports. And Tim will be showing some of those in a minute. How did we get on with using a, a SQL Server? Uh, we found that the data import into Excel, unsurprisingly, was much faster. We had to use Excel data connections, as Power Query on-premise can't refresh our data but actually using those data connections was fine. When we came to actually configure the data refresh to make it work, so this is getting the data that's in SharePoint to refresh against our SQL Server database, it was a real challenge to get that to work. Um, you have to be very accurate in terms of the patch levels of SharePoint, the patch levels of SQL Server, and the patch levels of Windows, and you have to do quite a lot of careful configuration work. We were up against it time-wise, as you've seen from the time scale of the project, and we ended up taking a much more pragmatic approach here, which is to use a third-party tool um, called Power Update. 
And if ever you're looking at a scenario where you need to update data that's in Excel within um, um, SharePoint, then Power Update is well worth taking a look at, I would say. It's an inexpensive third-party tool um, that gives you a lot more control over your data refresh. So we used that. Other thing we found is that slices were quite unreliable and the performance of those could be poor. And there were, there were two aspects to that, really. Um, the reliability of a slices, again, comes down to being very careful in terms of getting your patch levels right um, of, the, of SharePoint and SQL Server. Uh, and then for performance, you need to think very carefully about how you use slices because they can have a huge impact on performance. Slices, <coughs> um, the, uh, the possibility of slices was going to, it remains uh, very attractive to our users to be able to, because we're, our, our field users have large, fit, have large areas that they're responsible for, uh, different distribution channels and then many distribution outlets within them, being able to slice and dice and select just uh, the doors or counters that they're interested in is very important. So it was frustrating that the slices work, uh, but not reliable enough for us to roll it out at the moment. So one workaround that we had for the, the problems of slices is we actually um, filtered the data loads into multiple workbooks, so effectively having one workbook per slice, uh, and that improved performance quite quite considerably. Yeah, and the filter functionality is less sexy, but it, it, it does work and does do the job for the time being. And I, and I think there was a perception within Tim's team, and I think we felt it as well, that we'd really pushed this Power Pivot database and Power Pivot technology pretty much to its limits with, with the complexity of what we were doing, the volume of data, extensive use of calculated fields, calculated columns and slices. And that really brought us on to the, the, the final stage, which is still a work in progress, and that's using uh, SQL Server Analysis Services Cubes and pointing Excel at that. That's a much more performance solution. Um, it's still, say, work in progress to get that set up, but we're confident that's going to give us the, 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 the oomph, if you like, that we need. We are, we're busy, at the, my team are busy as we speak, uh, using uh, analysis services to uh, rearrange the underlying data model, data schema, and to start designing uh, AS cubes. Uh, and also, I don't think we're going to speak about it in a minute, re using reporting services. Yeah, well. absolutely. Um, and it, that is the next level we're moving to. So what, we, what, so what else we've what else we going on at this stage? We, we've got the cubes being built. We're doing further work to optimize the number of workbooks and filtering the data that goes into those different workbooks. Further work on optimizing the slices and getting those working more efficiently. Uh, and also, as Tim said, uh, we've introduced reporting services for the non-kind of analytical uh, data to just enable the team to create straightforward reports. We, we're, we're planning to use this for, for fundamentally two groups of users. The, the, there will be users who just want canned reports, the same ones every morning, 9 o'clock, and the, the Excel Power Pivot piece allows uh, analysts to drill down into the data. Okay, thanks Tim. Excellent, excellent question, and that's that's actually fundamentally why we were so keen. I was so keen to grasp this this solution, is because it's non-code, it's non it's not within the IT department, and it is completely within the hands of my teams who are technical users uh, to design the reports from scratch. Absolutely, they, once you've uh, all you need to do really is grasp Power Pivot and be familiar with Excel, and you can, des you can design your own reports. Uh, you'll see a couple of examples uh, that we've done, but actually this, this, the whole development of those reports and the ability to change them as the business needs change is one of the huge attractions of this. Yeah, so, um, so how do we get on with analysis services cubes? I think, <coughs> yeah, excellent question. Um, yes more technical knowledge is needed to work with cubes than with Power Pivot, but it's still in Tim's team. It's still Tim's team that are working with the cubes, creating the reports and delivering the solutions that, they, that the business needs. Um, 
we found an analysis services cubes much more performance solution. One thing we really did notice is very critical to look at the the resource usage, especially memory and CPU on your servers, because some of this stuff can be quite intensive uh, when you start um, spinning up these large cubes and, and querying them. Uh, initially, for the for the initial solution, we had it working on uh, two desktop machines actually, mm -hmm. uh, with uh, sixteen gigs of RAM each. Mm -hmm. Uh, we've now now it's in production. We have it within the uh, uh, virtual server environment. But uh, I think initially, we're up to it about worked on twenty four gigs of RAM yeah. or thirty two, I think, on yeah. one server now. Yeah. So you do need to you need to plan for that and think very carefully about it. I'm now going to let Tim um, talk at, about some of the reports that are actually in use and show you some of the reports and explain what they are and, and how they're used by the business. So we've got three reports for Tim. To Again, apologies for it being limited and uh, anonymised, uh, but uh, it'll give you an idea of what we're talking about. Uh, this is actually an audit report of, uh, of usage. Uh, it's a uh, standard audit reports over SharePoint. It's very important to us to get an idea of take up of, uh, by our users between head office and the field and then within the field which brands are using it and which ones aren't uh, so that we can because the whole point of it is consistency for our general manager to be so that when he's talking to the, the different brand general managers they're all looking at the same numbers it's therefore very important that they are all looking at these numbers so adoption was very important uh, what this is showing is that at the moment we're getting about five or six hundred hits a day. Uh, we're getting between 100 and 150 unique users, individual users a day. Uh, the total field force is about 350. Um, we want to, in due course, roll it out to uh, all of our counter managers as well, which would then make it, we'd have a user base of getting off the 2000, so it is early days. Uh, and then actually that, that usage by brand, you can't see we blanked it out, I'm sorry. Uh, you can see that there's one brand that is a very early adopter. Uh, we're very pleased with them and we're using their example to encourage the rest. Uh, this is just an example of what the report looks like. It looks like Excel and that's part of the reason why designing reports is a technical user uh, function. This particular one is looking at freestanding stores, uh, the freestanding store distribution of channel across all uh, of our brands. The, we have similar ones for our online business versus uh, bricks and mortar. We have another one for department stores. Uh, those are the brands uh, and their doors down the, down the left hand side. The structure of the report itself is standard because standardization was very important to us that all the brands had, been, had their own business analysts and were designing their own reports. This is now the standard model which uh, analyzes sales by week, by month, year to date and then on a rolling 12 months basis. Um, you will see the red and green arrows that flag up change on prior year. This week versus, last, uh, versus the same week last year is the way our sales managers look at the business and therefore this is the way it's flagged up that way. I'd just flag a couple of things at the top there. It says unsupported features. There are some features in your workbook. Uh, that is Excel services warning us that there, are, uh, that there will be embedded macros if a user downloads it into Excel. That appeared when we threw it open to users to download it into Excel because there was a call for that to be allowed. They were used to being able to hold, to, to uh, have the, the reports within Excel. So we allowed it. That, uh, that warning appeared. We've, uh, it's not frightened anybody, surprisingly. I thought we'd get a load of calls, but it, but it hasn't. Uh, the other is this field here, which is percent estimated. Uh, this is new functionality that um, we've been able to introduce through this where if we are waiting for sales data to come from a particular uh, department store counter, uh, the, we have an algorithm that will estimate the sales based on the performance of that door over the last six months 
and the performance of the rest of the brand that week. Thanks, Tim. And worth just saying as well that that whole um, table there is actually pivot table. Absolutely. Yeah. Thanks, Tim. And the last one is this one here. Uh, this one is uh, looking at all brands uh, on a corporate basis. So this is a key report for our general manager. Uh, you'll see that the, the fundamental layout is exactly the same, which is important. Uh, what I would flag up here is that it is looking at the, at the business on a like-for-like -like basis. We've been able, behind the scenes, to manipulate the data to be able to um, uh, disregard new or closed doors to give a like-for-like -like basis, which is the second thing that our sales managers are most focused on. What is the underlying sales trend once you strip out new doors? Thank you very much, Tim. So what I want to do now, getting towards the end, is to just uh, wrap up by looking at kind of the lessons learned, some of the tips and tricks that we went through whilst doing this project. Um, I've split them into two halves. I've talked about performance and about the platform itself. So, th so the main things with regard to performance are as follows. You have to plan your SharePoint environment for performance. You have to think and plan and monitor, particularly memory and CPU usage when you're doing this kind of stuff. The other thing we, we found really is that PowerPivot, that in-memory database in Excel, can work really well for your kind of light to medium usage scenarios. Um, but when you get into some real heavyweight number crunching, you really are back in analysis services cubes territory. And so you may consider a hybrid approach, which indeed is what we've gone for now, where we're using for the lightest medium scenarios, power pivot, nice and easy to use, nice and quick. For the um, heavyweight ones, a little bit more work, a little bit more effort, but using analysis services cubes to give us that kind of that power that we need. Observation as well with power pivot is that our slicers can have a huge performance hit and that you need to, if you're going to use um, slices, you need to think about that very carefully and how you're going to use them. And we liked our work around to that, which was to split the data into multiple workbooks and allocate one slice per workbook and filter the data into each. Okay, when it comes to platform, what did we learn? Well, here's a really important point, I think. Don't forget, with <coughs> all of this, that, is that SharePoint is actually optional. You can do all the analysis work. You can pull your data into Excel. You can create your visualizations just using Excel if you want to. And you can share that Excel spreadsheet around your, your business. You don't have to have SharePoint at all. This is a SharePoint conference, right? So we all think that SharePoint is fantastic and the ability to view and interact with it in the browser is great. But if you want to, you can just do this stuff with Excel. If you've got a significant amount of data, as we have, then you do need the 64-bit edition of Excel, though, because only that can address enough memory for all that data to be held in memory. We've, we've, we've found already that our, our pivot tables work fine on iPads. The power view, nice-looking, sexy dashboards, unfortunately, if you're on-premise, that currently does not work on iPads. Uh, we found that the Power Query uh, data refresh when you're on-premise is not an option, so we've had to use old-school Excel data connections. Um, we found that slices and data refresh in particular can be problematic, and to get both of those to work correctly, you need to get your patch levels and your config spot on. And lastly, we found that Power Update, inexpensive third-party tool, a few hundred bucks, gives you a lot of control over data refresh, overcomes the problem with patching, the problems with Power, um, power Query, um, is a good tactical option in our experience. Just to summarise then, just talk a little bit about what's next and what work do we have planned now. Um, we want to expand and develop the current suite of products. And that development will, it will <coughs> continue indefinitely as, as the requirements change. Um, we want to start using reporting services more extensively for the non-cubed uh, kind of data. Um, we want to bring in more data sources uh, from other, other sources within the business. And also, um, both Tim and I are quite keen to to, uh, to introduce more graphics and charting. Um, the reports that Tim showed, I think you agree, are quite text-based and quite tabular, and, and that really reflects the way people are used to working, I think, to some extent. Yeah, and particularly within our business, we're in the, we're in the, the look and feel business, uh, and our sales managers and our counter managers, they're, they're very visual, 
uh, and therefore we're, we're looking forward to be able to introduce uh, more graphics. Uh, so far as data sources are concerned, at the moment we're just in, importing plain vanilla sales data, so what we <coughs> sold, when, through what channel, across, through which door. Uh, but actually, we, the, the next stage uh, is to uh, hook in CRM data, to hook in payroll data, actually, to look at which of our staff are selling what. Um, that is part of, uh, it's a part of the plan. And cloud, as we've said, maybe, maybe one day we'll be revisiting I'm the cloud. I'm sure we'll move in that direction. That's a little way off just yet. Okay, a couple of closing thoughts then. Um, if you've got or you can get Excel 2013, then the, the cost of entry into the Microsoft BI stack is really very low. But as I've already said, you don't even need SharePoint. Also, if you've got some BI requirements within your organisation but you're not quite sure whether or not Microsoft stack is going to cut it, um, then I would say that evaluating the Microsoft offering is virtually a no-brainer as the cost to do that is really very minimal. Uh, and if you, could, if, you've got, if you can use cloud services like Power BI as well, then even better. If you take that approach and, and do an evaluation of the Microsoft stack, in the best case, you'll get the solution that you need. But in the worst case, actually it will help you to refine your requirements before you do go out and select a, more, a different platform. So it may end up acting at least as a stepping stone to a more sophisticated BI solution. Um, to close, then a couple of resources um, that might be of interest. Um, if, you want, if anyone is interested in a, a Power, BI, Power BI guide, if you'd like to give me your business card or, or email me at that address, um, I'm happy to, 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 to distribute that. Um, also, if anyone's interested in Power BI working on iPads, I, I've recorded a couple of videos, uh, and there's a URL to, uh, to those there as well. And, um, if you want those links, then again, um, please get in touch with me, or I think you'll be getting the slide deck afterwards, minus a few of the uh, report slides as well. Um, so that really concludes. I'd just like to thank everyone for attending today. Special thanks to Tim from, um, from our customer for taking the time out from his busy schedule to come and attend today. It's much no, appreciated. I'm, I'm very proud of what we've done together, actually. And uh, thank you, Tim. Enjoy the rest of the conference, and thank you very much for your time today. Thank you. Thank you.